Hi everyone. Ooh, that's loud. First off, let me just uh, take the time to thank the TEDx organizers for inviting me and bringing this phenomenal line of speakers. I, I'm very honored to be here today. The topic I bring you is about questions and how questions can move us forward. So I'm going to take you through a personal journey, so bear with me, uh, and hope that you have enough reflection at the end of TEDx to actually move yourself forward. Albert Einstein said that the important thing is not to stop questioning. Curiosity has its own reason for existing. And today that is more true than ever. There is more pressure for results, there is more noise, and less time to actually pause, reflect and think. When I was preparing this TEDx speech, I actually went through a journey of self-reflection. And this started six months ago. I start by asking myself, what can I speak about? And then trying to come up with the answers, I come up with a couple of things. Personal development, mobility, leadership, coaching, user experience. And it, it was a lot of things that were connected to my daily life, to my daily routine. I could recognize them as sort of what I can call expertise, something I have some sort of knowledge I could share with. But there was no emotional connection with these words. There were no stories, there were no experience that I could relate to yet. So I dig on the answer and I was trying to make a better speech after better speech after better speech. And I realized that, wait, I'm focusing so much on the answer, why not just look at the question? Different questions bring different answers. So I move to another question. I start asking myself, what have I experienced in life that is worth sharing? I look at a couple of experiences I had in my short 28 years of life, and then I saw that, well, I led from a couple of those. I stand out that I led the largest youth-run organization in the world. I help 50 children in India living a better life and education. I have coached and mentored several people from different nationalities that today are in the right path. On a funnier note, I'm also getting married in three months, and there are about 40 nationalities coming to the wedding, so that will be a TEDx on its own. Um, <laughs> so, so I look at all these things, but, but then again, I was uh, like trying to see, okay, the TEDx is coming together, I'm starting to see what I can actually bring as a takeaway for everyone. But I was missing the trigger. I could not see what was connecting these experiences. There was a missing link. And I was like, what can help me having this missing link? And then I thought, oh, of course. I should look at my passion. Maybe what I'm really passionate about should connect these experiences. And then I find a reason why I always embracing these type of experiences. So I look, okay, Hugo, what am I deeply passionate about? So again, let's go again to the routine, trying for, doing answers, going for a walk, rethinking, and then I come up with other things. Design, entrepreneurship, technology, writing, coaching, but more on what gives me energy in these things. So I get very excited when I hear about big scale impact entrepreneurs and their stories. I get a lot of energy when I'm coaching people and I learn from them and they learn from me. I love when I see that technology is influencing positive behaviors. It gives me so much energy that I feel I actually go and I have limitless skills to go beyond. But you know, when we start changing questions and answers, some pieces fall, fall apart, they fall along the way. And I miss what I think it was, what will be the core of what I wanted to share with you, which was the stories. Because the stories we tell ourselves determine the stories that we live. So I went back again and I said, okay, let's work on the question. And I came up with, what have I experienced in life that was powerful beyond comparison? And I look at the different experiences I had, and I was going deep and I was like, what made them so powerful? And then I had my aha moment. I realized that human connection is what has been driving me all over my life. It was when I had a deep human connection in my work, in my conversations, in the cultures I've met, that I really found that I was at my best. When was, when was the last time that you were at your very best? 
you were at such a good moment, you were feeling so good about what you were doing, that you felt powerful beyond comparison. I'm going to share two stories that, of this experience that I felt were beyond comparison. For me, it's an introspection. So the first one is with Isaac. I spent eight years in this organization. Um, for the ones that do not know, it's the world largest youth run organization focused on youth leadership development through powerful experiences, such as an international exchange experience or leading a team at, with a local, national, or global scope. When I first joined the organization, I asked, what can this organization do for me? And that guided me in my first roles, guided me in uh, how I interacted with people, it guided how engaged I was or not. Looking back, I see how much this question changed from the moment I started interacting with other cultures. From the moment I went to my first international conference and I saw that there are a whole bunch of cultures that have different ways of solving the same problem. That despite all our different beliefs, different religions, we are all connected by the single fact that we are humans. And if you have a shared belief, a shared vision, a global mindset, things can happen. So I was very connected with this, and then I look back and I see, yeah, my question changed. I changed from what can this organization do for me to what can I do for this organization? When that question changed was when I actually got passionate about it. I was more connected than ever before. I didn't fail my studies. I did finish my graduation on time, and I still got involved with Isaac. And they got involved with a local office in Lisbon. And then I started asking, how can this local office be an inspiring story for the whole Portugal? Then I moved to the national team of Isaac, and then I asked, how can Portugal, a small country, be an inspiring story for a network of 110 countries and territories? And then from a national office, I thought, well, why not to try the global team? So I got the privilege to work for two years with 40 people of 30 different nationalities. And then the question changed to, how can this organization be an inspiring story for young people? The evolution of the questions not only helped me, it helped also the organization, because I was always looking at how people can help each other. How can I be led and lead? So then, looking back, a takeaway I have was that you find the right questions when you are surrounded by the right people. We are the average of the five people we spend most time with. They challenge us, they help us grow, they make us a better or worse person. Do you know who are the five people we spend most time with? Are they challenging you enough? Are they helping you finding the right questions? Who are the right people for you? After Isaac, uh, I went on a bit of a question, which was, so, I just was part of an organization. I was leading 60,000 people in 110 countries. So what now? So I decided actually that I always had an unconscious, cannot describe why, connection with India. So I said, I'm going to move to India. So I decided that in 15 days, basically, from the moment I told my parents, hey, I'm going to India, when? In two weeks. <laughs> so, so it was a bit of a shock for them. Um, got the visa, moved to India, and then I joined an NGO which uh, objective was to help uh, underprivileged children in India to have a better life and education. My goal was to set up an educational program that could help them gain new perspectives in life. So I was like, yeah, sure, I can do all of this together. And the funniest thing that was that the first time I arrived there, I saw that how wrong I was about anything I wanted to bring. When I saw that they don't have a chair, they don't have nothing to write on, they just have literally a floor to sit and listen. So from the moment I saw them, I said, okay, this has to have some change. So I tried to, with the help of so many people, which I could not like, thank them enough to, to help me put in together the program, I saw that when I come first to them, I would start thinking about, okay, what can we teach them? So we brought a variety of topics. 
science, technology, space, values, culture, sports. We teach them football. It was the only sport I knew how to play. Um, so, so we teach all of these kind of things, but the particularity was that we start every lesson, every week with a question. We had a set of questions that they had to think about. Why we had these questions? Because when they first feel what we can call an educational form, so they had to put their names, etc., etc., we had a question which was, what do you ambition to be? What do you ambition to become? And I thought, when you are a kid between six and 10 years old, I thought it is a time where you have the wildest dreams. But there, pretty much every single kid, their dream was to be a rickshaw driver, a tea seller, or a housewife. And there's, I don't see nothing wrong with it, but I was wondering if their dream was not wilder, was not bigger or wilder because of the perspectives that they have, or the lack of them. So we start putting this program together, all these questions, and through every week, engaging with the kids, creating different ways of practically teaching them th things. I still remember a, a class where we try to put them in the solar system, but they are very, let's call it, very active children, trying to put a three-year-old kid in a solar system and say, stay there and just walk around, does not work. So the solar system was a bit of a chaotic, let's say. <laughs> but the, the interesting part was that, long story short, at the end of the project, um, when I was finalizing my, my goal there and I was transitioned to a new person to take over, um, I had uh, four children at the, in the last days that came to me, Jyoti, Arti, Rinki, and Suresh. They took me aside in different days and they, they, they told me, Hugo, and then something in Hindi, I had a translator because uh, they didn't spoke much English. And they showed me that, what they wanted to show me before I leave was that their form, they had crossed their ambition and they said, I want to be a dancer. Arti wanted to become a teacher. And Suresh wanted to become a corporate man which I do not know exactly what it was in his dreams, but... <laughs> but for me, it was the best gift I ever could ever get. I could see some change. And looking back, I really believe that meaningful experiences can spark powerful questions and can create societal movements. Maybe these four kids will spark the energy to the other ones next to them. Maybe they will influence their parents. I know that some of them today are already having better life conditions. And I know that when I'm going back to India, probably one of my friends gets married, I hope. I will go back and I know that one of my goals will be to see how are the, how are the kids. Talk to them, see how they evolved, see if there is actually a movement that this NGO could have started or not. But I do believe deeply believe that putting, sparking powerful questions can actually drive societal change. We ask and are asked thousands of questions in our life. But only few of those drive us to do something beyond ourselves. And those are the ones that really matter. We are so much time in our comfort zone that some, we don't need to do much to find these questions. We don't need to change whole, our whole, whole life to find these questions. We just need sometimes to, you know, get out of our comfort zone. And when you get out of our comfort zone, as you already saw many times, sometimes magic happens. Sometimes things that are not expected, you know, like they start changing. And because you gain all this perspective and space, maybe, you know, Maybe this small target, if, oops, I hope this is not a problem. <laughs> Maybe this small target becomes a smile. Maybe the smile becomes something else. And suddenly your comfort zone is no, you cannot look back there. You got out. You found your new comfort zone. This is your new comfort zone. And from here, when you reach the moment where probably this is too much of a comfort zone, Maybe it's time to ask ourselves and get out and find a new and comfortable area to explore. I'd like to leave you two questions that let that ask be over and just take the time once to ask these questions to yourself. What would you do 
anything different in your life if you knew, knew you could not fail? Again, would you do anything different in your life if you knew there was no chance at all you could fail? And if there is a small hint, up to you, if there is a small hint that if you want to change something, then what is holding you back? Thank you.